Hello, Internet. This is Whispering Whim, bringing you my first ever journal slideshow, ASMR style. <laughs> um, it's a, a bit of a surprise to me that I'm making this. Um, I share little tiny bits of my life, right, when I'm doing my other videos. But I try not to bore people. You know, I don't I don't think of myself as that interesting, to be honest. <laughs> um, so I try not to go overboard with the life details. And lately, I've had quite a few lovely people who have wanted to know more about my art and what's been going on. Um, maybe understand a little bit why I haven't been keeping up with my videos as good as I used to. Um, so I am doing a little journal entry. Um, and anybody that feels invested in that is welcome to listen and look at my photos that I'm uh, putting up on the screen. Um, I will say that this isn't for everybody, right? Because it's mostly going to be me rambling <laughs> with no real direction other than to explain my July. So with that, we'll start with the big important thing that I suspect most of my viewers know at this point. Um, I got engaged. My boyfriend and I met almost five years ago. Uh, it'll be five years in October. And it's always been kind of a, a test of patience with him, right? I love the boy um, so much. But we've definitely taken a lot of steps really slow. Um, I don't think I got an I love you until maybe a year and a half into our relationship. <laughs> So, lots of patience. Um, and I had actually gotten to the point where I stopped, I guess, expecting a proposal. Like, I knew that I would marry him one day. <laughs> and that's all I just, you know, I would tell myself, I'll marry you one day, and who knows when that day will be, but it'll happen, right? So, the proposal was actually a very genuine surprise. Like... When I look back at all the little signs, oh man, I should have known that he was about to propose. Um, for example, he said he was really excited that morning and he got up like three hours before he normally does, right? Um, and he's like, I want to take a walk. And that really, really should have been a big <laughs> uh, red flag or... I guess green flag, since this is a positive event, maybe? <laughs> I have no idea. Um, there's a park nearby that is having a um, light show. Actually, it's just about done now. I think it was for July only. It was like a month-long uh, show where they had Chinese lanterns. Um, I guess it's a New Year's tradition to make these very elaborate light sculptures. And he wanted to go look at it in the daylight. And being <laughs> ever focused on my art, I had two little felt sculptures that I was like, oh, well, while we're at the park, I can take pictures of them. And so I'm stopping, you know, trying to pose my little creatures, right? And um, he's like, oh, I bet you there's a better spot up ahead. I bet you there's a better spot up ahead. <laughs> and uh, looking back on it, that should have been my other sign, because he's not... He doesn't usually take the lead unless I ask him to. And uh, I didn't realize it, but he was very... You know, he was kind of directing me, right? To a very specific spot in the park. So we get up to the jellyfish, right? And... He starts fumbling with his backpack, and he I can see that he's struggling to say words, and it just clicks, right? I don't see the ring. He hasn't said anything <laughs> coherent yet. 
and I realize he's proposing to me and I'm just like, yes, <laughs> just instantly. Yes. <laughs> and, um, so he never got down on one knee cause I kind of, uh, circumvented that. Right. <laughs> um, and then all of a sudden there's parts of his family and parts of my family all coming out of the woodwork. He had, uh, arranged it with my sister who had just recently moved out of town. So she drove back into town for the day to spend time with us and to see my proposal. And it was very, very magical. So that was definitely the biggest highlight <laughs> of my July, but it certainly wasn't the only thing that happened in July, right? So the next important thing should be my Portland show. Um, however, in the mere days between my proposal and flying off to Portland, I managed to chip my tooth pretty significantly. <laughs> and it was a front tooth. And because I was going to be talking with people at my art show, um, I needed to get it fixed right away. So I was in and out of the dentist getting temporary set up and all these things. Um, and that was a little stressful, but we got it all, we got a temporary in um, before I left. So then I flew out to Portland. Now this show that I was going to do, um, it was my first like fine art show in a long time. I've actually been doing conventions more recently and doing fairly well at them. Um, I'm still kind of, I would say like beginner good. <laughs> in that I could definitely be more profitable, but I'm still kind of finding my, my ground, right? Um, and it's a whole different world from the fine art world, which, um, I was in, I went to school for art and got my BFA. Um, so I've had shows before, but it's been a while. Um, so I flew out to Portland and I knew it was going to be like a collaborative show. I knew I wasn't going to be the only artist in it, but I was a bit overwhelmed, to say the least, on um, how many people were in it. Uh, my cousin, she married a gentleman who owns a restoration studio that's part of a larger like art collective, if you will. Um, so basically, a uh, very nice patron of the arts, uh, converted an old industrial area into workshops and um, just spaces, you know, that people could go and practice their art in. So this show was um, actually just that whole industrial area opening up to the public. Sadly, I don't have any good pictures of Portland. Um, basically I was either in a car, <laughs> uh, dealing with the massive amount of traffic. Like Portland is way worse than most of California. <laughs> and that's saying something, right? Um, but either I was in traffic or I was at the studio and I was trying to help them get ready as best as I could. So I did some vacuuming and some cleaning, and, um, it was, it was exhausting, honestly. So lots of work, right? And then we get to the Portland show and it's actually, it opens up, you know, I have my own spot. I have lots of artwork out. Um, and they had, they estimate that they had about 6,000 people go through the whole complex, like not necessarily 6,000 people passed by my little area, but you know, just overall, right? I think part of the problem was is that I wasn't a local person and this particular venue, I think a lot of the people were there to see local artists, right? You're in a studio. Um, so I couldn't blame people for finding out that I was from out of town and not wanting to buy anything. And then I think one of my other problems is that all the, the artwork that I was most proud of 
was like um, my felted stuff. Uh, Henry the Octopus is my all-time best piece right now. And when I make these bigger felted pieces, I put them on a wire frame and they're actually poseable. They can interact uh, with their environment. In a convention setting, I think people kind of get that, right? You know, a lot of people are very big fans of like art dolls and, you know, uh, setting up their their nerd stuff or, you know, being into animals or whatever it is that I'm at the convention for. Um, but at an art show, people kind of expect an art piece to be self-contained. Um, so the fact that, you know, my little octopus wasn't on a pedestal in a box and like, this is the one way that he exists kind of was probably off-putting for some people. Because at that point, I'm pretty sure some of them were like, well, is it a toy? Is it really art? You know, um, being uh, a person that loves fine art and kind of like craft art, I find it really annoying that there's always such a divide. You know, if something has any purpose beyond just looking good, um, then it's usually a craft. You know, anything that has practical or maybe even a impractical use, right? Um, so, for the crowd at my Portland show, or the Portland show, <laughs> wasn't my show, um, just didn't get it, right? And I think I understand why. And I kind of know what I could do differently. Although, I doubt I'll go back to that particular <laughs> event in the future. Um, I did not even make enough to pay for my plane ticket. <laughs> um, and the one thing that really kind of made it so that it wasn't a total loss, I sold this um, drawing um, that I have of two bunnies. And they're kind of like doing a little bunny kiss. And it's a motif that I go to every once in a while when I'm doing like commercial artwork. Because I've done consignment shops, I've done logos. Um, I was a freelance artist for a while. And I think when I struggle to find <laughs> something to draw, I'll draw a bunny. Um, so it actually kind of annoyed me that it sold. <laughs> and that it was basically the only thing that sold because here are all these people that maybe don't get the felt crafting stuff, right? Because it's not really art. And in my mind, doing bunnies that I've done a thousand times is not art. <laughs> you know, that's just muscle memory. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's, that's the struggle you face, right? When you want to make a living off of um, doing what you want to do, right? Because not everybody's going to see eye to eye with you. Um, but I'm not, I'm not discouraged. I actually have a convention, so not an art show, but a convention um, later this month. And um, I've been working really hard to get ready for that, right? making, you know, cutesy little, you know, felt guys, um, some charms, which I could see the charms maybe not considered fine art, but <laughs> that's a topic for another day. Um, but I've been getting ready for the show and trying to like do the beginning stages of planning a wedding, which is just insane. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder half the people that have ever gotten married tell me to just elope. <laughs> um, nothing solid yet, just looking at venues and it's already aggravating. Um, but anyway, so I'm doing the, these things, right? And on top of that, I have a hourly job. I work at a bakery. I'm a uh, decorator. And all the girls there 
are very supportive of me and my adventures, right? And one of them suggested that I apply for a show that's here in town. Um, there's like a local artists, um, it's kind of like a, a workshop gallery in that they kind of let you learn how to paint or do a pot or whatever, right? So this um, artist's guild is having a show and it's one week <laughs> before I go down to Sacramento. And I was like, well, and she kind of pushed and pushed. So I sent in some pictures, right? And I really, I didn't try that hard. I kind of, you know, I didn't critique my pictures that well. And, you know, I was very basic with uh, the email that I sent. Um, but I got accepted. <laughs> so now I have an art show and a convention to do this month on top of all the other things I need to do um, and it's a bit overwhelming <laughs> but that's the life I chose to live right and I don't think I'd have it any other way so I'm a happy person I can I can genuinely say that I'm I may want more out of life but I'm pretty happy most days well anyways that's um plenty of talking about me <laughs> it's a little weird to do uh, I, I must admit um so thank you to all the amazing people that decided that they wanted to know more <laughs> um yeah I'll do my regular videos at some point, I promise, and I'll talk to you next time. Nighty night.